Hello, hello, everybody. It is 5.49 p.m. Central Time on the 25th of October, 2020. Hope you are doing well. We are here on the Earthquake 3D live stream yet once again. We are here to talk about seismic events. I will turn on a display capture so you can see what I see. And we are going to start really quick over here in the West Pacific. I've got some stuff to show you guys tonight that I think is just going to blow your mind in the United States in particular. So let's just quickly get over international. Down in New Zealand, new 4.0 range activity striking at the plate boundary next to Wellington and the North Island going up to the thumb of the catcher's mitt. Remember 4.5, 4.6 at the thumb of the catcher's mitt. And remember this, the antipode, the opposite side of the planet from here, if you were to go straight through the planet and come out on the opposite side, brings us out in Switzerland. Now remember 4.6 and 4.5 as well, and remember Switzerland, because we're going to jump all the way over here to the west, and we have a 5.4 coming in right next to Java, Indonesia. Skipping over and going over into Asia, we have a 4.6 to 4.7. Two different earthquakes over two days' time, striking over here at Myanmar, going into China. Then, going further to the west, we have a 5, striking at the pinnacle tips of our arrows in western Iran. But check it out, guys. Look what hit. A mid-range 4.5 to 4.6 earthquake struck in Switzerland on the antipode. So we have two 4.5s, one on one side of the planet, one on the other, and they're exact antipodes, again, exact opposites of the side of the planet from each other. So what does that mean? We've seen antipodes get hit before, opposite sides of the planet, when there's big movement going on. And we know there's big movement going on with our deep 6.0 activity just north of New Zealand. So again, recapping, we have a pretty much the same sized earthquakes going all the way across, reaching out over across Asia, over across into Europe, following the plate boundaries, which I've shown so many times in previous updates. Here, the red line starting in the West Pacific, we have that hammering action, the deep earthquakes. Then we have that spread of activity going up and around through China, going over to the West through Iran, going through South Europe and up into Switzerland. So two sides of the planet, two same sized earthquakes, New Zealand and a world away over on the plate boundary north of Italy, next to where CERN is of all things. And CERN's antipode is again, well, CERN is in Switzerland, so the antipode of CERN is down in New Zealand. Now I said your mind was gonna be blown, right? So should we look at everything else international or should we just get into what's gonna blow your mind? Well, let's start up here in the Northeast. I'm a little nervous about this because I really don't know what to make out of it other than I just need to show you the earthquakes and show you what I found. So we're going to start up here in New York with the earthquake that struck on the 22nd at Merritt Park, New York. And I apologize if you hear a cat meowing, guys. She's going ballistic. I don't know what's going on. Here we go. So zooming in on the earthquake epicenter, look, here's the earthquake epicenter right here. Look what's right next to the earthquake epicenter. High tension power lines or extreme high power lines. Many, many rows of them going north and south, west and east, but mainly north and south. You see it. It's a clear cut. The earthquake is coming in right next to a set of extreme high power lines. Again, high power lines, high tension power lines or high voltage power lines north of New York. Now you might just say, oh, okay, well that might just be an anomaly. It might just be a chance that it's striking next to the power lines, but let's go down to Sparta, North Carolina. And I cracked some Sparta jokes yesterday that were pretty funny. They're still laughing about that over my update from last night. We're not gonna do that again now. Let's just go down and show you what's there. So we're going from one set of power lines in New York. What's down here? Look, here's the earthquake epicenter. And right next to it, this, another set of extremely large high voltage high tension power lines and these are not in every county guys so to get these high tension power lines high voltage power lines next to the earthquake epicenters is a little strange so that's two locations right well let's carry on let's go look at this 2.3 that struck down here at the tennessee border maryville tennessee okay Copy and paste the coordinates. Now, the depth on these earthquakes is down inside of the crust. We'll get into this in a second on what it means. But first, let me show you the third location. These are the earthquakes reported in the last two to three days, guys. 
Here's the earthquake epicenter, and look what's right next to it. Again, extremely large, multiple sets in this case. Again, the high voltage, high tension, whatever you want to call them, power lines. And they're the big kind, not the kind that just go down your street. So to get them at one location would be kind of weird. To get them at two locations would be a little bit more weird. To get them at three locations would be even more weird. Now, before we get into the cluster here in the middle of the United States, I want to go out here to Colorado, where we have an earthquake rare west of Denver, up kind of off Highway 70, going west into the mountains next to Idaho Springs. If you guys have driven out there, let me show you. We'll get into the others, don't worry. So here's our earthquake epicenter, and look, they have a hydroelectric power generation station, but look, the earthquake epicenter is here at the top of the hill, and down at the bottom of the hill are the power lines, many lines, again, like 10 or 15 of them, that go back down to the hydroelectric station. So it's rare to have a hydroelectric power station anywhere, and to have one right there at the power lines and the earthquake next to it, that's now four locations. So again, New York going down to Sparta, North Carolina, going down to Tennessee, going over here to Colorado. What about Texas? Balmorea? Oh, I probably am butchering the way that's pronounced, but let's get the coordinates on this. This is amazing, guys, isn't it? This is a huge discovery. Made this today. So let's go down and look up. I never thought to look this whole time. Look at the earthquake epicenter. And then going through, quite literally going through the deserts of southwest Texas. You can see it. I've got it marked here. Let me zoom in to show it to you. High tension, high voltage power lines. Again, now we've got drill points at this location. But how could that play in? Well, let's carry on before we go any further. Let's go look up the rest of these. So all the earthquakes that I just showed you, Colorado, Texas, Tennessee, North Carolina and New York are all directly, and I mean within a few hundred feet of, the high voltage, high tension power lines. So let's go in and zoom here. Let's go up into, let's say, Kansas, where the rare 3.0 earthquake struck at Hope, Kansas, where I found those old oil wells from the 1940s and 1950s directly at the earthquake epicenter. Let's go see what's there in Kansas. And again, these high tension power lines don't just run everywhere, guys. So to have them very close, look, look what we, again, now, again, I don't, I don't know what to, to tell you about this other than we have more high tension power lines going through the area just south of the location, going down to our power generation stations here at the wind farm that I made note of yesterday. And so we have power generation and we have, again, the power lines going out and away right next to where the earthquake epicenter is that's the three in kansas let's go down here into oklahoma and pull this swarm location here perry oklahoma am i proving my case yet do i even need to tell you what i think is going on here piezoelectric energy into the crust discharge into the crust here's our earthquake epicenter here are oil wells at the location which are long connections of metal like long antennas, let's say, going down into the crust. But look what we have going right through the area here. Do you see it? Well, here, hold on, let me back this out. First of all, going across the area this way to the east by southeast and west by northwest, we have pipelines. Okay, but down along right next to where the pipelines are, let me see if I can get a zoom in on this. Here's the pipelines. We have our wind farms again. I, again, I, I, now, this is not me doing anything. I'm just pointing out that the electrical generation is right next to... Oh, 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 and here, look. I also made note of this. So coming out from the wind farm, look at this. It's like a matter of a mile or two. There they are. And they connect down to it, so there's no debating it. And our earthquake quite literally is like six farm fields over to the east. So one or six farmers blocks if you will so one two three four five between them and it goes down to the wind generation so there's no doubting it that's the swarm here in oklahoma so hold on now again i just showed you each spot this 
And these are all the earthquakes reported today. Let's get all the smaller ones there too, the 0, 0.0 and greater. Here's the 0, 0.0 and greater. All that did was add in one in South Missouri. And we should probably go look that one up. I have not looked it up. Tiptonville, Tennessee. Did I say South Missouri? It's technically on the Tennessee side of the border, but I don't know what's there. It's the New Madrid Seismic Zone, of course. There might not be anything of any significance, but all the others that I just showed you are all directly next to these power lines. It's getting a little weird. It's getting a little strange, wouldn't you say? So this looks like a canal for farming. That's good news. Do we have anything else here nearby that might lend into the earthquake being caused by something else? Like, do we have these power lines going across through here? I don't see any, which is good. But still, it's on the New Madrid Seismic Zone, so we have to look through and see if there's anything else here of any significance. Now, you'll be able to tell where the power lines are. Uh, well, usually you'll be able to tell where they are going through the forests in Missouri, for instance, over here. But it's going to be hard to tell here over in the farm fields. But we are in the farm fields where all the hotspots were happening. So it's getting a little suspect, wouldn't you say? This is the only one that's not, or the only one that I see that's not directly at electrical lines, at least as far as I can see. This looks like a farmed field with, again, an irrigation ditch going through it. So unless I see some kind of big power lines here, I would think this was related to the New Madrid Seismic Zone. But I have to look them up, and I'm going to look them up real-time live so you guys can see it as I find it, anything that I find. And I'm telling you, we cannot call this a coincidence. When we have New York, New York's directly at it. You zoom in right in on the earthquake epicenter, there's the power lines. Same with down next to Sparta. Same with down here in Tennessee. Same with over in Colorado. They're all right next to... Or same with down in Texas, too. And same with in Oklahoma. And same with in Kansas. So how could we have earthquakes developing out next to drill points and on the edge of the craton when we have the power lines there? Electric charge in the crust. That's the only explanation I can come up with. How can we have these earthquakes right next to all the... Power lines, guys. It just is too... I mean, it's not like there's power lines exactly high-tension power lines everywhere. And to have them all be, again, out of all these locations, just a handful, are not at going from Colorado all the way to the East Coast. So you probably are going to wonder, what about on the West Coast? We already went and looked them up earlier, guys. Not all of them, but a lot of them are coming in next to the same kind of spots. Some of them are a little hard to see. For instance, like up here in Idaho. I went and looked up up in Idaho. So let's just, we looked up Stanley right here. We couldn't find anything. But I looked up the 2.8 over to the east at Clayton. Well, let me just show you what I found. I don't know if I marked it, but I'll go in and see if we can see it again. When I looked earlier, again, we found the power lines right there. But they're going through the mountains, so they're a little bit, they're going along these roads as opposed to over the peaks directly. There we go. So here's the earthquake epicenter. Here's a giant quarry. And going from the quarry or to the quarry, I don't know. What, I, you'd think it would probably be going to the quarry. You can see them again. I mean, they're, again, visible from aerial photography. They're not like the small kind that go down your street. And the earthquake right next to it. But it's not a quarry blast. Again, the earthquake, we looked it up. It's down many kilometers down into the crust. There, in Idaho. Up in Washington, we have a mix of things up in Washington, but we have kind of the same thing going on. Now, before we get into Washington, let's just go down into California and address this. This stack of earthquakes here. This big stack of earthquakes over the past two to three days. This is at Geyserville, California. The geothermal electrical power generation station on the side of the volcano there. Where they've drilled into the volcano at the geysers to get the steam to turn the turbines to provide the electrical power for the area. So another electrical power generation station. Now, hold up. That's too many. Right there, that's too many. That's too many. I've already named too many. For, for a 48-hour time period, too many. Something's up. That's the discovery. So how can this happen? I think the oil wells themselves are acting like long VLF antennas that are going down thousands of feet down into the ground and spreading out. That's what I think is going on. That, and then the VLF, can we know, can have a piezoelectric effect into the crust. That, that the waves, the low frequency waves, can come up. We can actually see an increase in hertz, that's oscillations per second, going from low frequency into, well, I mean, well, there's, this gets into sci-fi now, which is 
how can low frequency convert into high frequency? Naturally speaking, efficiency scaling, but that's a long story. It's just sci-fi. I don't have any examples to show you on that, but I do have to tell you that all the locations that I've looked up so far, only a handful of them are not next to power generation stations or high voltage, high tension power lines. There's too many of them. And then that means that the earthquakes are being precipitated or caused by electrical discharge into the crust on the edge of the craton. Or it's coming up from the edge of the craton, from Mother Nature, up into the power lines. Something else started to happen at the power lines across the south and the east and the west. Hot spots. Hot spots started to appear without fires. Then fires after the hot spots. But hot spots started to appear in these locations as well. Let's talk about Colorado. The hot spots in Colorado. Let's talk about the hot spots over in the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Talk about the hot spots over on the East Coast. How about the hot spots in New York? That was a couple weeks ago. Right up here. Now we have an earthquake there. Next to the high tension power lines. It cannot be coincidence. It's a huge discovery on my part today by putting this all together. It's insane. It really is. I can't believe it. Let's go up and look in Washington. Let's pull this to 0 0.6. Ntiat, Washington. Again, I did not, I don't think I checked this location for power lines, but I'm going to. I'm going to start checking all the locations for power lines. Because there's a piezoelectric discharge effect going down into the crust. That's got to be what it is. Got to be. So where are we? Ah, look. Look what we have here. Here's the earthquake. What is this? Hold on. I'll be darned, guys. I didn't even know, but I should mark it now. Look what we have. Multiple huge power lines. High voltage power or tension, whatever. Tension, I guess, is going to be a reference to the length of distance they're pulled taut. I don't know. I don't know much about that. But I do know that these are huge, huge towers carrying huge wires and large amount of electricity alternating current through it. And AC is just like radio waves. There's the earthquake epicenter right next to it. It can't be chance. Look, it's the only one going through the area. No, no exaggeration on that. We have to go like full two counties to the south to get the next ones over. Okay. Slam dunk. That's in Washington now. Let's go down and look up the 2.0. Packwood, Washington. This should take us in next to the volcanoes. So we have drill points in the ground that are lined with metal that could act like long antennas, VLF, in the ground. That would explain why we're over next to those locations, over in Oklahoma and so forth. Here we're next to a volcano. I don't have anything else here nearby. And I do think we looked this up earlier. There is nothing here nearby. We have to go up here to the north where I don't think they've harnessed this, or have they? Oh, wait, they sure have. Hydroelectric power generation. We did look this up earlier. We have another earthquake, and this one's right next to another hydroelectric dam. And again, these are not all over the place. It's not like every big lake has a hydroelectric dam on it. But you can follow the power lines away from it. So that's confirming that they're generating a good amount of power there. That's just one set. The other set goes off to the north. Come on. It's another one. Just like the other one. It's right next to it. Now, we go up into Seattle. Guess what's there? I mean, do I need to keep proving my case to you? I mean, this is like number 10 now, isn't it? Issaquah, Washington. Okay, let's go put the coordinates in. We're getting closer to downtown Seattle. But this is phenomenal. Earthquakes next to power locations. Hey, that explains the earthquake over in Mineral, Virginia at the Cuckoo Nuclear Power Plant. That explains the earthquake next to Fukushima. Hey, look, here's the earthquake epicenter and look what I have marked from our earlier search. Huge power lines, high tension power lines, high voltage power lines, going over to the east, follow it all the way. No doubt about it, there it is. And the earthquake is right next to it. That's the 1.7, right here in the middle. Now, we went and looked these up, up to the north. Uh, there was nothing up here, up to the north. But then again, we go up to the north, and we're right along the Puget Sound. This is on the Strait of Juan de Fuca, up in here. 
and when I don't see any power generation there, the earthquake came in right next to this. Gumes Island or Gumes Island. Where does the power come into the location? That's the question. Are they generating it here on land? Is it coming across from this, right across the bay, right here? Look, a huge, wait, where is it? Where's the refinery? Here, look at the size of this refinery. This refinery has its own power generation stations here. That's what the turbines are. But it goes right up to here and comes out to here where I guess they load up maybe ships with gas or oil. But it's just a hop, skip, and a jump across. I'll say that it's likely being fed power from the refinery right across the area on an undersea cable of some kind. I don't see any lines going over the area, for instance, but it's just so close. Look at that. They could easily run a cable over there. That's the real question now. I mean, come on. It's just a hand, handful of miles away, and that's where the earthquake is. Once we get up here into Vancouver Island, I... Need to look this one up as well. Langford, Canada. Copy and paste. So again, I'm going to say it. It's only a handful of locations that are not directly next to these power lines of some kind. Here we are in beautiful Canada. We have a series of small roads. Leech Town is the nearest location. Oh, wait. Hold on. What's this? Oh, dude. Okay, this is just another slam dunk. We are right next to a series. Look how many there are. How many poles are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each one has two to three lines. It's huge. High voltage power lines. Look at that. You can't tell me it's coincidence when it's that close on all of them. Can't be coincidence. Now, the drill points are playing in, and the volcanoes are playing in, but why? Well, they're weak points in the plate. Clearly, electrical energy is coming up out of these weak points. Not just seismic release. <laughs> I think we may be getting closer to the ultimate cause of most earthquakes, which I think most of us online, at least, are weird geophysics theorists online, like me and a few others, have already deduced that the electrical energy is playing into seismic activity. Okay? Amazing discovery, wouldn't you say? And that gets into S Southern California, where our swarm is happening down to the south. Let's, we should look them up. How close are they to the electrical generation stations? I can prove to you that this is one at the geysers. Let's pull the coordinates and put them in on Google Earth. Come along with me on Google Earth. Here we are. Earthquake epicenter, power generating turbines, pipelines that get steam, but the power lines that go away from there are coming right out of there and spreading out across the whole area, feeding power to the whole region. And that's where the earthquakes are. Hmm. What about up here? This 1.8. Story, California. I don't recall having to look this location up pre previously, at least the name. It's by Paradise, California, but that's somewhat to the south. Here's Story, California. Well, the first thing I'm now looking for are power lines at the location. And you know what's so ironic about this is they blame the power lines on the fires previously up here next to Paradise, California. So the real question is, do we, do we have some power lines right here? Wouldn't that be weird if we did? Now, I don't think they're going to follow a straight line over the mountains. They might. I don't see any power lines going through the area, which is a little strange. Wait, hold on. I spoke too soon. Right here. Let's follow these and see where they go. So you can see the towers on that, hopefully, and you can see the, the line on those but we can follow that clear cut across and see how close that goes. Oh, okay, we're gonna go in pretty close, guys. 
The clear cut is going up this way. See where it says Merlin and Castle Rock? There's Story. The lines are going right through Story. Look, not an exaggeration. The power lines connect right through the little itty bitty town of Story. Look at that. The town of Story is the size of, look at that. It's just a railroad town. It's got railroad, a little road going through it, and huge sets of power lines that meet together there. They come together there. The po you, What? Do you think USGS knows? No way, man. That is way too close to be chance or coincidence. I'm going to mark it because, again, it's right next to it where we have the only multi-layer high-tension power lines, and it's right at the town the USGS triangulated it from. For crying out loud, high-voltage power lines. This is insane. This is the biggest discovery, I think, and this isn't, I, I, what do you want to bet it's like this in other countries? Wherever they're using AC. You got to understand the difference between AC alternating current and DC direct current, which we use in all our devices and all our electronics. Now the AC is a way of transmitting the electricity through lines. And AC alternating current is also a way for transmitting radio waves through the air at a certain number of cycles per second, called hertz. <laughs> Gets a little c complex, but simply put, I can just say that the AC that is going through the power lines is similar to radio waves. They're not the same, but they're similar. And so AC can convert to DC naturally. And they found that out through HARP experiments from Alaska, where they were using VLF, which is an AC, an alternating current, in radio waves. And they found that it converts to DC and it goes into the ground as DC, direct current, into the ground. The radio waves convert in a process called efficiency scaling. It's amazing. And they detected that with buoys and very low frequency and high frequency down off the coast of New Zealand, where they were beaming from HARP up in Alaska and detecting it down in New Zealand. So let's carry on. Let's go down through the Bay Area. Now that I've shown you power generation station after power generation station, we just looked up this location here, which is directly next to a power line. What about this one? I mean, they're right next to each other. The 1.0 to the north, or should we go down to the south and look at the ones in the Bay Area? Let's go look in the Bay Area first, since they're both the same size. The first thing I'm going to start checking for now are nearby power lines, which would be doing a piezoelectric discharge into the crust, precipitating or causing an earthquake by the power lines. And it could be radiating out from the power lines. What's this? Look! Holy crap! Look where we are! Look where we are! This is a power station. It's not just the lines. This is, this is all the transformers and everything. Look, it's the only one nearby. You've got to be kidding me, man. Look, it is 100 feet away. It's right across the road, the earthquake. And there's where the lines are. That's where the lines run out. You've got to be kidding me. This is just the biggest discovery this century aside from earthquake forecasting. Let's carry on down to the south. But, I mean, that's close enough. <laughs> My God. Sorry, I hate to get so excited, but when I make a new discovery that is just mind-boggling crazy, what do you do? Let's go to Alamo, California and take a look at this one. These are all kilometers down in the cross, too. Now, you've got to remember, lightning normally, sometimes, mostly, comes out of the ground and goes up into the sky. So the same thing could happen down in the crust. It could come out of the magma and go up into the crust. Hey, look where we are. Look, look, at, here's the other earthquake location. Look what's up on the hilltop here. Another set of power lines that goes across the highway. There is no disputing that. The earthquake is there. There's the power lines. This is insane level, guys. Every one of these that I'm looking up. So power generation station here at the volcano. Electrical stub station here, south of the Bay Area. And then another set of high-tension power lines. 
here at the 1.1. Let's go down to the 1.9 and see what's down there. Corlitos. Is that like correlation, but in Spanish? I say the postulate of the correlate, correlation is the, the power lines are generating seismic energy. What's at this location? Well, it looks like we've got some houses. And it looks like backing it out. Sveildal Sve is the location, if I could pronounce that properly. And do we have anything here nearby that's of any significance that would... Oh, wait. Yep. Yep. Clear cut through the mountain. We've got our high power line, high voltage power lines. And they go, wow, look, look, it goes right over these people's houses. Well, that's not good. You know, the power lines, there, there's some talk, at least in the 1980s, there was talk about the power lines leading to radio frequency, unintended radio waves coming out of the power lines, which then were causing excess radio wave exposure to the people who were living down below them, and it was causing some kind of problems in their heads and their bodies, but mainly in their brains. And I, I don't want to say it was causing cancer, because again, that was just the hearsay on it, but that's the talk. So again, we are within a couple miles, and that's something else. The earthquakes are striking right next to the spots where we're within a couple miles. What's this down here? Freedom, we got an airport, Pinto Lake. I'm just looking for anything big. Like, do we have a huge power generation station here to top it off? I mean, is there anything else of significance nearby? But I'm just seeing it again where we're just like right over the hilltop. Right on the other side is where the power line is. Right, I'm sorry, right here. Right here is where the power line is. And right on the other side of the hill is where the earthquake is. It can't be chance or coincidence. The electric discharge is going down in the crust by many dozens or at least a few kilometers down into the crust. And we're getting an earthquake next to it. Now let's go over to the east. What about over here at Monte Cristo Hills? Let's go pull the earthquake in the middle of the bunch. Mina, Mina, Nevada. I did this earlier and I was mind blown to find out what was here. Let's go put the coordinates in. So this is where our 6.5 earthquake struck four months ago. And just looking at the area nearby. Let's see, did I mark it? We looked it up earlier, so I got to find it again. Is that it right here? No, that's the road. It's a road. Well, let's see. I should have marked it earlier. If I didn't mark it, I probably am going to kick myself for not doing that. Let's see. Monte, oh, right here, right here. So, going along the road on the side of the road, now these are not regular telephone pole power lines. They again have it cleared out, but it's in the desert now. And you can follow it down around, and it goes along the road as far as the road makes the bend, and then it kind of makes a bend and goes out across the desert. But again, now again, we're right here along the road. Let's follow it back. And it meets back up and goes to the west where I don't know what these are on the sides. I would think that's for Arroyo. That's to stop flows of mud because these fill up in the desert really quick. So that's different, right? But again, now that's close enough. That's on the south side, now down next to Coaldale. And it goes right up along the road. So, I mean, come on. If Again, if it's right along the road like that, I'm just going to tell you I think it's related, but they're not these huge towers like here. And that's a pipeline. I'm sorry. That's a pipeline going up to the north. They're down here. They're not the huge towers like we see. But then again, it's the desert. So I wouldn't expect huge tower-like structures unless I'm missing them somehow. But again, oh, that's a pipeline again right there. So they also have pipeline. I mean, it makes sense. The pipelines are going to go around the area, go around the mountains. The power lines might go through it. Up here to the north, looks like we have the same thing going on along the roads. So you can follow the power lines back, though. It's so close, guys. Oh, man. Again, that one's iffy. The, the Monte Cristo Hills, that one is sort of iffy. Out of the whole bunch, that's the only one so far that I'm seeing that's not directly tied to something of significance directly like a power line right next to it or a power generation station. Now, I would like to skip over Ridgecrest really quick. 
which all of these earthquakes right here in the Mojave. We'll get back to it in a moment, and we'll go down here into the middle of the Mojave at Ludlow, California, and pull the coordinates. This takes us out next to Pisgah Crater out in the middle of the desert. There's something here. So here's our earthquake epicenter, and look, now this gets crazy, because look, we are in the middle of the desert in the Mojave. So you can't tell me there's power lines going everywhere through the middle of the desert in the, in the Mojave. The earthquake epicenter is right here, and here are our high tension, high voltage power lines. Three distinct sets of them going through the area at Ludlow, right where the earthquake swarm is, right next to it. And it's the only spot in the desert for many, many miles that we have anything, power-wise. Have I proved my case enough yet? Let's go over to the east. Let's go over to Nevada at Caliente. Go take a look and see what's there on the surface. This one's now up right next to the surface at Caliente. I don't think we looked this one up earlier. So I'm going to be looking it up for the first time. So we got hot spots out there. Look at that. We got hot spots out there. So I didn't look it up myself earlier. Let's just see if we have anything of significance nearby. We have roads, of course. Roads. Looks like we have some pathways, an old dirt road there. 3.4 earthquake from a previous time. Might not be anything of any significance here at all, guys. That's why we got to look it up. Oh, wait. There's a hot spot there. In the middle of the mountains... In the desert, there's a hot spot. What's down here next to the hot spot? Hold on. Again, we have one of these roads with all the little drain offs on it, so that'll stop erosion. I'm looking for power lines. I'm looking for things going through here that would be standing out as being possible causes of the earthquake. Again, a little desert road, or the causes of the hot spot and the earthquake side by side next to each other. Is there anything else here nearby? For crying out loud, there's another one right down here. What's this? Some kind of quarry. I Again, they've got a quarry going on there and a little bit of farming. A quarry and a farm? What are all What is all this? What are those? Oh, wow. Look at the amount of electricity either coming out of this place or going into it. Look at that. Look at that. That Again, the high capacity power lines. They go right up to this place. Let's carry on and see how far further north they go. They carry on through here and go up to the north. Oh, man, it's right next to it. It's a, it's a slam dunk. This is... Look at, look at how long these power lines go on for. They're huge. All right. Well, that's, that's again, we got a, a power line, hot spot, earthquake next to the power lines within a couple miles. And let's see how far south they go. Nice golf course out there. Look. Anybody want to buy a house? Look at that. Again, like, there's, there's nobody that lives there. What the heck? Well, we could go move over and take over the town. You guys want to? Change it to Duchestan. I'll become the Grand Puba leader of that. The mayor of Duchestan. Trutherville. Okay, let's carry on. So that one proved it as well. Let's go up here. Look at the 0 0.9. Rachel, Nevada. Guys, all of these are coming in right next to. And it's not, again, I'll say it for the thousandth time. These... High voltage, high tension power lines aren't everywhere in every county. So to get these earthquakes right next to it is just too big of a coincidence. What's this? Wow, what is this? We have a hot spot there. No way. We have a hot spot there. And this is some kind of military range of some kind. Hold on. Wait, look, they're radar domes. That's a ray dome. This is a radar range. Hold on. Yeah, every one of these is a phase. See the dish? Every one of these is a phased array radar or a dish of some kind. What is this place? 
The Test Range Airport again. The Directed Energy Weapons Test Range Airport. Look at this. I was mind blown when we earthquakes hit here last week, and I clicked on it, and that's what show shows up. A DEW, a Directed Energy Weapon. The LAWS, the LAWS, Laser Ranging System, which is not ranging. It's for firing and shooting things down. The test range there with all the radars there. Wow. An earthquake hit there. What are the chances? Let's go down to the south, shall we? Let's go into here. This is starting in the Owens Valley. And let's go to Kozo Junction. So what am I proving to you in this update? There is an electrical connection to the earthquakes, including on the East Coast back in 2011. Your earthquake in Virginia that shook up the East Coast right next to your nuclear power plant. Right there. Lake Anna, the Cuckoo Nuclear Power Plant. Yeah, the earthquake right next to it, 5.9. Hey, look where we are, guys. We're right in the middle of the Kozo Volcanic Field. Must be related to the volcanoes. But wait, look at all the electrical turbines here. Electrical turbines that are being turned by steam from the volcanic field. What do you want to bet that it's already predisposed for seismic activity because of the volcanoes? And then the electrical charge goes into the area and knocks it up into an actual earthquake. What do you want to bet? And then, spreading out from there, going down to the east by southeast, we go down into China Lake and the test facilities there and dead end into the Garlock Fault. So maybe we should go down and look where we dead end into either one of these earthquakes at Torona, California. Can we call it tron -uh? Because we're dealing with the grid. But um bum Let's go see what's down at Torona, California. Hey, hold on. What do we have going on across the desert out here? Looks like we have a little something on the Garlock right there. What is this? What are those? Looks to me like we have another government facility with a helicopter pad and a bunch of stuff stretching out from it. What are these? Looks to me like we've got a bunch of power lines ran across the area to all these other phased array radars. That's what they are. Look, you can even see the mast on it. Do you see the, the, the antennas on it? And you can see the shadow on it. That's a giant antenna. Do you, like, like a, think of a TV antenna on the top of your house. Man, where are the power lines feeding all this? The, oh, look at that. Another, that might be a bomb test site there. But look what's right next to it. Look at this radar dome. That is certainly a radar dome. Okay, yeah, another earthquake directly in the middle of a, another field of some kind where they're doing some kind of directed energy. So wait a minute, lots of power there going in from the power lines. A piezoelectric discharge. So wait a second, starting up at the Kozo Volcanic Field where the electrical stations are and going down across to the radar fields and the DEW test range there, then carrying on down to the power lines down next to Pisgah Crater at Ludlow. What's in between these then? Right down here in the middle. Let's go pull a 0 0.8. Ridgecrest, California. The electrical grid itself is causing earthquakes or precipitating them, guys. That's what I'm saying. If you're having a hard time figuring out what I'm saying. The electrical grid is either pulling earthquakes up out of the crust or dropping them down into the crust. Mother Nature is either sticking them up into the grid right next to where all the power lines are or humans are dropping them down into the crust right where the power lines are. Or, or, oh, wait, wait, wait. A third outside possibility is that somewhere else is causing this outside force precipitating it down onto the grid, which then goes down into the crust. So what's at this location here? Looks to me like we have some interesting facilities here of some kind. Hey, look, look at that. A crane, some kind of, looks like this is a mine of some kind. A mine? Wait a second. Why would they be doing mining out here? On the east side of of Ridgecrest where all the test facilities are. Do we have anything else here nearby? Because again, with all this mining, you're going to need some power of some kind. Especially with something like this with all the... Are these bunkers? Again, I, I'm having a hard time. Yeah, these are bunkers. Look at that. 
some kind of bunker. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got power out here. You got power. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, right there. You can see. Oh, look how many wires there are. Crying out loud, there's like 20 wires on those poles there. That's laden with wires on those smaller poles. Where does that go? It's back up to here. Okay, I mean, we're, we're certainly close enough, guys. I mean, we are, <laughs> again, we are right next to a series of large power lines. And in this case, bunkers and radar facilities and quarry. <laughs> These are all bunkers. Storage hangers, experimental test facilities, and the like. Can't say it's chance. No one can. So, recapping, connecting between all these locations, we have high voltage power lines at strange locations that are already lined with metal, goes down a few hundred feet to a few thousand. I think they're like acting like antennas. How many do I how many more do I need to look up? We just looked them all up pretty much. I didn't look up the 1.1 up here to the north. Hold on. Willits, California. I didn't I've never looked this one up. Don't know what's at the location. I'm being thorough. We're looking up each one. This is the last basically 24 hours worth of earthquakes, I, I think. We'll go pull the 24-hour feed again for sure to be certain on that. Here we are. So, earthquake epicenter. Then This is just north of the, all the electrical generation here at the volcano down at Clear Lake. So, I mean, it's not that far. Let's just see if there's anything here nearby. Hey, look. Right there. Right there. Hold on. Let me zoom in on them so you can see them. There they are. Again, another set of high-tension, high-voltage power lines right next to the earthquake epicenter within a couple miles. That's it. Drives home the point because there's none other over to the east at all. We have to go all the way over here to get to our next set, all the way in the next county. Not even. Jeez, not even in the next county. Look, let's just keep going north or south. Here, here's the dam. I bet they're using. I bet they're generating electric over here at, one, at the dam at one of these locations. You think they would, right? This looks like an older dam. That might not be power generation right there. But you think they would. Usually they utilize that. Anyway, we're right next to it. Willits, it's just within a couple miles. There it is. You can just, now you can pretty much guarantee it. So this one here up to the north, marked in blue, right next to power lines. This one at the power generation station. These two up here next to the power lines directly. This one at the power generation substation. This one right next to the power lines. This one right next to the power lines. Going over here to the east, this one's the only questionable one at Monte Cristo Hills. Going over here, right at the power lines and the radar facility. And did I look that one up? If I didn't, I did earlier for certain. You guys can just look it up if you guys want to yourself. And that one's at a power generation station there over north of Las Vegas. Did we look that one up? Hold on. Caliente, Nevada. I think we did look that one up. If not, no biggie. You guys can look it up later. Like I said, down in the middle of the Mojave, already proved that. Power line going right through the middle of the freaking desert. And that's where the, the earthquakes are, right next to it. So what about down in L.A.? I mean, if it's holding true across the rest of the plate, and it's going across the rest of the country, including New York, including North Carolina at the Virginia border, including Tennessee, including Oklahoma, including Kansas, including Texas, including Colorado, I've all just proved that to you. You cannot tell me that it's chance or coincidence on all of them. And there are not high-tension power lines everywhere in the freaking country either. Pardon the F word that I keep using, but it's better than the other one. So let's go down to the east by southeast. Look up this 1.3. Piezoelectric discharge into the crust or up out of the crust. That the electric grid itself is either inducing or causing or leading to Mother Nature causing the earthquakes now next to it, around it. How could we stop it? I don't know. Good question, guys. I, I don't know. I'm not getting into that yet. Let's go look this up and see where we are. There's the earthquake epicenter. Now, again, when I see something like this going through the mountains, I just start to wonder, is there anything there nearby? Usually, if they take the time to build a road there, they will take the time to put these big power lines through the area because, again, you're like killing two birds with one stone. This is like a small road here, dirt road off the top of the peak. That is where the power lines are coming across, but they're so small. Those are small ones. I'm looking for large, clear cuts of huge power lines of some kind, like we've been seeing around the rest of the country. If I don't see them, then I might think that this might actually be a regular earthquake, not related to any power lines or anything. 
Okay, zooming in. Mountain Road on one side. Mountain Peak Road on the other. We look for spots where the power lines would come up over a peak. That's what you look for. Oh, wait. Man, it's so, that's low resolution. It's so hard to see. We'll have to see if we can find any more. Hold on. No. Boy. Again, that's going to bother me now because uh, that's low resolution. I want to see it. Why would we have low resolution down in California of all places? Ah, they'll give us some excuse. Okay. I don't see anything here nearby. Hold on. Oh, okay. Hold on. Oh, boy. Yeah. Going along the roads here, you can see it. They're taking the opportunity to line the road with it in this case. You can see the tall poles on this. It's not just like normal phone poles that carry a normal power line. This is one of the more, again, more high-tension power lines. What is going on there? Look at that. Oh, it's a tunnel. Of course. They'll pass it through the tunnel. You'd think it would go around it. That is so close. Hold on. Let's just keep going up to the north. Follow the road here. Yeah, there it is along the road. We should get to a electrical substation at one of these points here. What is this? That might even be an electrical substation. I, again, I don't know. That's a little out of the place there. A little out of place. That's close enough, guys. It's right on the other side of the hilltop there. The only question is, does this one also have it? But I don't see any on this road. Again, that's more dirt road-like. So uh, you would think they would put it along the paved highway. goes up to Mount Baldy. There's no doubt about it. All right. I mean, it's again, it's another case where it is right next to it. It's not a matter of even five miles away. And it's the only one around four miles. Like, there are no other roads around for a long ways. Really, this is the only spot except for that dirt road over here where there's no houses or anything. So along the highway, we have the lines, and that's where the earthquake is, right along where these power lines are going. That's just the one I pulled up here. Should I keep going? Now, out in the water is a different story. Let's go look it up. Let's go see what's there. Out in the ocean off the coast of Encinitas, California. So all the other locations, at least not all, I shouldn't say all, a good predominance of the other locations are directly next to power. Directly next to it. Like, not even a couple miles away. Some are directly below the power lines themselves. Okay, we are between San Clemente and Escondido at Oceanside. Hey, wasn't there something right here? Where's San Onofre, the old nuclear power plant? I might have that wrong. It might be somewhere else. But I just want to find out. Let's find out. It's supposedly shut down, but the old casket's still there, and I'm sure the stored nuclear waste is somewhere around there. Man, it's right next to it. <laughs> oh, my God. There it is. I, okay. Now, this place is supposedly out of commission, but they built a nuclear reactor right along the coast. There's the coast. There's the nuclear reactor. It's out of commission, but they still have, I think, some of the fuel there. And the fuel, these nuclear facilities... Like Fukushima, that was in shutdown mode when the earthquake happened. I think there's an effect, a seismic effect. Hey, Hanford Nuclear Waste Storage Facility up in Washington, ring any bells? How about the earthquakes and fires around it? So we're right next to San Onofre. Oh my God, of all the places. Of all the dang places. What about in the middle here? You know, we could go down across the famous slow slip zone at... Anza Gap, Vala Vista. I'm just curious. I have to go look up every one of the locations I normally talk about to see if there's power generation there or power lines. Because it's just too many of them to be a coincidence. Like enough of them that I'm really, really worried that our grid is somehow affecting seismic. Or seismic is affecting the grid. Either or is troubling, wouldn't you say? 
Again, going along the road here, we've got these are ah, no, those are just now. This is an example of just regular power lines. So I wouldn't think that those regular power lines, unless it goes right over the earthquake epicenter, which it does. Hold on, the power lines go. <laughs> they do. Oh, they do. They connect into high tension. There you go. Okay, so it goes from high tension down to one pole there. We go from three sets of lines across huge towers down to the smaller poles on the road right there. And the earthquake is right here where it makes the split. That's... You have to look real close, guys. Look, it comes through the... Mount here, here. It goes right through here. These three lines. And it connects to this pole. That connects to this pole. And it goes out in the middle of nowhere and then it connects back. And then the other poles are going along the road down there. So again, it's two different sets. There, you can see the double pole there. Double pole high tension coming in on one side of the road. It is. It's right next to it. Man, I'm so glad I'm looking all these up. What? I mean, that's in the middle now. Now we just matter a matter of miles we could spread out over to the west and go look and see if there's more. But if it's in the middle, it would... Probably stand a reason. So the grid is causing the slippage. The vibrating, shimmying, shaking of all the electricity going down to the ground or coming up out of it. Where is this spot? On the edge of a subdivision of some kind. Okay. Do we have anything else nearby of any significance? What's this? Diamond Valley Lake got a marina it's got a dam oh how about an electrical generating station <laughs> oh my god it is it's right next to it that's the electrical it's another hydroelectric generation station and the power lines that come off of it look at it you can see them coming off of it or is that going into it is that going in or go coming out? You think it would be coming out, don't you? Come on. Who are we kidding? You'd have to be a fool not to see it at this point. How many more locations are there? I mean, there's no other locations, are there? Except for out here in the Juan de Fuga factory. What, do they got an undersea cable going right through there? Wouldn't that be wild? You know, Facebook was out there drilling. You know that, right? They abandoned their project. They, it broke off in the ground. They just left it. You guys, you guys, I'm not joking here. Hold on. Facebook. Oh, Cascadia drilling. Hey, there it is. Oregon Live, September 1st, 2020. Not even that long ago. Facebook's abandoned drilling equipment poses no environmental risk, company commission report says. Oregon Coast Advocacy Group plans to sue. <laughs> an environmental assessment commissioned by Facebook for the drill, drill equipment it abandoned under the Oregon coast has found that the machinery and lubricating fluid pose no significant risk to the environment according to a report released Tuesday a report made by the company by the way it's their own people the equipment including more than 1100 feet of steel drilling rods and 6,500 gallons of drilling fluid was lost 50 to 70 feet under the seafloor after an accident in April as Facebook was drilling to connect an international undersea fiber optic cable between Asia and the tiny coastal community of Tierra del Mar. In other words, they were going to connect over to China and bring in a fiber optic line and they were drilling in the sea floor to place that cable down under the crust or in the crust. I guess to protect it so it didn't have to be vulnerable on the sea floor. Dun, dun, dun. Could it be? No. They wouldn't drill out there on the famous Juan de Fuca fracture zone. They wouldn't drill down in there. Where did the earthquake strike? It struck right out here in the middle of the axial seamount. Let's go compare or I should say just south of the Axial Seamount. Now the real question is, is where did they abandon their drilling equipment? And why did they abandon it down in the crust? And what kind of accident happened that prevented them from carrying on? Maybe a methane burst. How about that? 
They drilled into a pocket of methane. Boom! Next thing you know, everything's stuck down there. Not going to be putting any fiber optic through there. Here's the earthquake epicenter right in the middle of the Blanco fracture zone. And I don't know of anything going through the area undersea cable-wise. So I would think that this earthquake would be one that Mother Nature was causing. But the others, and again, I, I just proved it to you. Uh, quite literally proved it to you. New York, Virginia, going down into North Carolina, Tennessee border, going over to the west across Oklahoma and Kansas, going down to the south, down through Texas, back up through Colorado, back up into Idaho, all of them. A predominance of them. How many would you say? 75%? I mean, I'm just off top of my head here. 80%, 90%? Less than 100%, but more than 75%. Let's just say that. That three quarters of the earthquakes in the United States are directly next to power generation stations or directly at power lines. And add in the hot spots, which are also coming in next to power generation stations, oil wells, drill points, and power lines. And we've proved that, you guys. We've already looked at all those and... Here's, here's one right here, for instance. These right here. Coming in next to drill points and power lines. Already talked about it. You can go across the rest of the South and see the same thing. It happened all the way up to Michigan. The power lines in Michigan were getting hit. Hey, here's a, here's a cluster today. Now look, it's in New York. I didn't know about it. I'm looking right now for the first time. Did not know there was a cluster of hotspots today in New York across this county. I mean, let's go look it up. Go see what's there. Is there anything of any significance here where all these detections of hotspots are? Well, we have roads. There's no doubt about that. Do we have any oil wells here? Do we have any fires going on? Maybe they got a control burn going on across the area. You know, it looks to me, though, like there might be a few clear cuts going through the trees here. There are. And look, right along through here, right along through the clear cut, I don't know if you can see it, the power lines. Now those are small, but it goes through one of them. Looks like there's a lot of them. Is there some kind of power generation station here nearby that we need to be made aware of? I mean, we got small lakes. I don't see any, but that doesn't mean anything. Oh wait, ha huh. Well, I do declare, how about a large solar power station generating power? that's gonna be coming out of the area, out of this, and spreading out across, following all those power lines that I just showed you. Again, you can see them here in the woods. All the smaller ones, though. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's go over here to the east and see. What do we have going on here? A field. A field with nothing in it. Maybe it's just a farmer burning their field. I see one pole in the, in the whole thing, one little pole. I'm looking for power lines. I see roads. I don't see any large power lines. I don't see anything of any significance there that could be causing the fires like that. Unless they're just burning on their own, which to me says, yeah, there's something else going on. I'm very curious now. So a huge set of hotspots there in New York. Somebody needs to get on this and try and figure out why they're all centered here around the solar farm right there. The electrical generation station right in the middle of the hotspot detection all the way around it going out from it. Again, the, the power lines are smaller, so they're not. it's not like a huge hydroelectric dam power generation station where you're going to have huge high tension power lines going or a huge high voltage power lines spreading out from there. This could be smaller. Well, it is smaller. It's just a matter of, is it related? It's right there. Come on. What are the chances? How many solar farms are in New York? You know what I mean? It's not like it's, <laughs> it's not like there's a large solar farm thing going on. Let's go over here. What, what about this hot spot? Where's this in Connecticut? Hot spot in Connecticut. What's at this location? Well, let's see. Right down at the center. We have some houses. We've got a road. Oh, wait. 
Again, this is a case of, now this is not just the regular power lines you would use down your regular road. These are more the big kind that branch off to a smaller pole. So we have three lines there and then here's a smaller pole next to it that goes over to your like residence or something. So they have them side by side, one's on the road. Yeah, it's high tension power line again, right there, hotspot. Can't deny it. And I don't know why anybody would deny it. Let's go up into Canada, go see if it's going on up here in Canada the same way. So we'll go out here. Here's a three distinct hotspots out here in Canada. Oh, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly going right through the area. This clear cut right here. You can see. Well, let me get out of the red centroid. You should be able to see the lines. They're, they're a little hard to see, but they come across. Let me see if I can find the shadow here. There, there's the shadow of one of the towers. Let's carry on. Again, the clear cut tells you where it is, so it's pretty basic. There, going across the water there, you can still see him. Another one. And again, it's right on there. So you can't say that it's just chance or coincidence. These other two next to it. Do we have any earthquakes up there is the next question. That's the only thing missing now would be earthquakes next to, next to these hotspots. So it's like two or three things happening. We have hotspots, we have fires, we have earthquakes. I just proved to you that most of the earthquakes are striking directly next to these power lines, which themselves are directly next to drill points and volcanoes. So what do you want to bet? And this is just a bet on my point at this point. I shouldn't even bet. I'm just going to propose this. That it's already seismically prone due to the drill points and the volcanoes. The punch points from underneath and the punch points from up above. Whether humans did it or Mother Nature, it's a weak point already which may release piezoelectric, electric in the ground, up out of the ground, like lightning. Lightning comes up out of the ground, goes up into the sky. This would be like that, but coming up and going up into the grid, causing hotspots, arcing, causing earthquakes. Hey, a new earthquake just struck here on the coast of California. Should we go look it up? It's a new one just now reported. Come along with me. Let's go take a look together and see what's there. San Lucas, California. 10 kilometer depth. This is a big discovery. With the piezoelectric discharge into the crust or up out of the crust and causing earthquakes? Dude, the nuclear power plants now make so much more sense. So much more. We're down in farm fields. Looks like we have a little bit of um, water irrigation for the crops there. There might not be anything here. I'm not saying they're all happening at electrical locations. It's just <laughs> all the ones that I'm looking up, uh, you guys see it. We're just going down in right next to them. Oh, wait. Right down. Wait, that, that's not the highway. It's not going down the middle of the highway, is it? No. I was going to say, it looked like some kind of tower in the highway, but that might have just been some kind of traffic cam or something. King City. Do we have anything nearby, or is it strictly on the San Andreas? This would be like one of the first earthquakes that doesn't have anything power generation right next to it or something. So far, I'm not seeing anything, but we've got a lot of roads here, and this is a real-time lookup. Hold on. What do we have here? Is that oil and gas? There's only one way to find out on that. We have to look for nearby jacks or pumps. So if we see an oil well nearby, I would think, but that's like right there, that's for cattle. And this up here could just be for water storage. It does have white tanks. There's a few of them on the hilltops though. That would go down to the houses there, so it's not uh, unheard of, let me just put it that way. But if I see an oil well right next to it, then we know it's related. I would think that these spots here are for irrigation, for pulling out and taking to the crops. What about right over here? What's this? Some kind of quarry. Okay. Looking for energy. Whoa. Never noticed that before. Wow. Why have I never noticed that before? That's pretty interesting. Anyway, getting sidetracked again. I'm looking for power generation. Many of the other locations were right next to it. This spot appears to be not next to it. One of the only ones that's not. USGS must be paying attention. 
Unless I'm missing it, and I could easily be missing it. I mean, look at the area. How are you going to even identify? You have to go in and zoom in on every little cut across the mountains. Anyway, I think I proved my case. And I wanted to get on here to show it to you. Now, the other part about this, is this happening elsewhere? Is it happening over in Europe this way? Well, a few of the locations I went to go look up, like over in Switzerland, had it at the location. Now, it's a little harder to tell, but let me go pull the coordinates and just put the coordinates in and see if there's anything there. So going over to Europe now, where the 4.0 earthquake struck. Now, we know CERN with its insane amount of power, but the way CERN gets its power, it takes a fair amount of power, like millions of watts, and zaps it up using klystrons. Klystron after klystron after klystron ran in a series, I think, or parallel, maybe both. And it increases the wattage up to trillion upon trillions of watts up through the klystrons. We have a ski resort here, and ah, uh, yeah, I was vexed on this earlier. I didn't know what it was. It said some kind of ski resort was at the location. Ski resorts. Ah, uh, Europeans. But hey, where there's ski resorts, there's usually power, isn't there? Let's go down and see right here along the road what we got going on. Now, I don't know how they do it in Europe with your power. So are you going to be doing it on large single poles connected across an area? Are we going to even see it? Eyesore, are they going to be generating it from windmills? How are they going to do it? Where does it come from? Where do they get their power from? Oh, wait. What do you want to bet they get power from hydroelectric? I mean, I might be wrong. They might not have a hydroelectric station in here, but you think they would. Ah, that might be too low tech for them. That, that's just a guess on my part. Again, I'm just doing this live with you guys. We looked up earlier and all we found nearby were the ski resorts. But when I see something like this, I start to wonder. They've got to have some kind of nearby power generation using the water. Who wouldn't use the water? Somebody would use the water. So anyway, I don't know. It's just a guess on my part. We have to look up internationally. I just proved it to you in the United States. Elsewhere, are they using AC everywhere else? I mean, are we one of the only spots where AC is being used? In the wall, like our electricity coming to us? That's just the question that we need to delve into. Other than that, really quick, let me just quickly tell you guys. The activity spreading across the planet. We're looking at 24 hours worth of earthquakes here. Let me turn back on our seven-day feed. If I turn on our seven-day feed, again, this is just one day's worth of quakes. What I just showed you was one day. So you can't say, oh, it's, you know, over a long period of time, Dutch, it must just be, you know, randomly at these electrical points. We could carry on. Let's go up to the east-northeast. Let's go up into Maine and look at the earthquake from a few days ago at West Paris, Maine. There may be nothing there. There may be power generation there. The New York earthquake and all the others had it up the East Coast. What about Maine on the East Coast? Here's the earthquake epicenter. Up, oh, right there. Right here. And look how many come together. It's like four sets come together right there. They go back around and all meet up right here. Looks like they come back around and go through this property here, across this orchard, and keep going. Okay, it's right next to it. Slam dunk. Glad I looked it up. Statistically, it's impossible now. It has to be related. And we can keep looking up locations. I mean, I, I just, again, this is seven days worth of quakes. We could just keep going down the list, but I think I proved my case. And I'm going to save this as its own video for everyone to watch back. I hope this intrigues the mind of many professionals, even people who are doubting or whatever on me on other things. I'd like to hear everybody's explanation. You think it's chance? I mean, again, we just looked at 24 hours worth of quakes, but I just pulled this past week and just randomly picked the earthquake up in Maine, and it too goes next to a set of high-voltage power lines. The nuclear locations that were getting hit around the world 
and the old storage locations where they're storing radioactive materials like Hanford or Dodo Ward over here in the Netherlands. They've all been hit with earthquakes next to them. And people tried to say it was chance or coincidence, including the earthquake that struck on the East Coast in 2011, right here in Virginia, next to the Cuckoo Nuclear Power Plant at Lake Anna, Virginia, 5.9. The Colorado earthquake, next to power generation and power lines, out in the middle of the deserts of the Mojave Desert in California. Earthquakes next to the powers. I mean, we just cannot ignore it. If you do, it's unwise. What? Why would it be unwise to ignore that? Well, let's say there's a huge discharge into the crust, a power issue that happens, and we are followed by a large earthquake. What if we could measure that? What if there was some kind of flux that shows up before an earthquake on the grid? If it's power coming up out of the crust, then we could maybe detect it. It's just something that nobody's thought to detect or look for in the power grid. That the power companies might just see it as some kind of blip on the radar kind of thing. I don't know. Oh, speaking of the radar, how about the radar stations and the DEW stations out in California getting hit with earthquakes next to them? And they're not explosions. They're like 10 kilometers down in the crust. 8, 9, 18 kilometers, you know, that kind of thing. So it's being precipitated down in the crust. Caused by a discharge or the discharge is causing the earthquake. So either the discharge is going down into the plate, causing the earthquake, or there's a discharge coming up out of the plate and it's causing a flux into the electrical grid. Either way, it's not good. Either way, we could possibly look for it as a measurement tool to see if there's something coming. Certainly there's a relation. I just don't know what the relation is yet. Piezoelectric or something else. Amazing stuff, man. I'm going to put this in the title of the video. We'll save it. I'll do a separate earthquake update covering all the other earthquakes around the planet at some other point here, maybe tonight or tomorrow. But this is a separate discovery big enough for its own video on its own. Add it to my portfolio of very, very strange discoveries over the past several years. I'll be back if anything else goes down, guys. Okay? Peace out.